I retired at an early age, you know, and so, you know, I don't believe in working hard and living a boring life, you know, it's like, I want to do business, but in the midst of doing business, I'm going to have fun. You know, I can't just be locked in doing boring stuff or doing stuff that I'm not really having fun or excited about. So any business I'm in, I'm actually having fun with it. And that's the only way I'm going to do business. And everybody around me, you know, we do business on top of business, but in the midst of it, we're going to have fun. You know, when I retired from the NFL, it wasn't a true retirement. You know, I just retired from the NFL. You know, I went right into the business field. And what we do is business on top of business. You gotta have fun, you gotta live life. And that's what we're gonna do every time. So business don't seem like it's business, but we're also having fun. I already had an end game in mind. You know, it started at University of Miami when I started taking business classes and I started preparing once I started getting money. You know, I started preparing, I started prepping myself, I started reading, I started learning about real estate, I started learning about different things that, you know, the people with money do. You know, football was a means to get to what my true purpose or interest was. You know, it's like I always wanted to be a businessman, you know, and that kind of carried over. You know, when you're young, you're 20, 21, 22, that's when perception and people judging you and people kind of looking at you and thinking you are just another guy. You know, cause a lot of times I think the financial people, they look at you like, oh, he's just an athlete or he's just gonna do like the rest of the athletes or whatever what they perceive athletes do. So they put you in a box. And when somebody like myself gets some money, you know, it means a lot because I'm not going back, you know, and I made a promise. I made a promise to myself. I made a promise to my mom. I made a promise to anybody that's close to me, like, I just need to get some money one time. You know, one time in particular that stood out to me was I had these financial people that wanted to meet with me. You know, I'm like, okay, yeah, we'll meet at my condo, I used to always tell everybody, just come meet me or whatever. Y'all serious, y'all will pull up and y'all meet up on meet me or whatever, you know? And so I got these guys, they go to talking about what they can do with my money and the things they can do. And they talking all this big talk and they're not understanding that like, man, like I'm on my, like I know things that you can do and things you can't do, you know? And some of the things that they were saying was inaccurate. You know, it was like they, you know, a lot of times when they look at somebody like myself, they want to try to use, in our world, we say, okay, they're trying to use big words and they're trying to talk over my head, but, you know, nah, I'm, I'm up on that, you know? You know, I just go ahead and I, I cut the meat and I say, okay, I say, listen, I say, and I, and I look to them, you know, and mind you, you know what I'm looking like, dreads, gold teeth, South Florida, like, hey, this is real, you know what I'm saying? You know, I, I looked, I looked, I, looked, I said, man, listen, listen, I said, man, listen, I said, look, I said, listen, listen to me. <laughs> look in my face, man. I said, I'm telling you. I said, man, look, I don't play about my money. Like, I'm dead serious about my money. I don't think you understand how hard it was for me to get here. So I'm letting you know how serious I am about my money. So don't come here playing with me. And, you know, I don't know if I intimidated those guys or whatever, but to make a long story short, the meeting ended and I never heard from them again. It was dead serious. They were so scared, man. I went to them scared. They all. I was like, like, what? The, what's up? They gone, you know. And it's probably because they was gonna do something wrong, or they was gonna mishandle my money, you know. And then, like, man, that stuff means something to me. A lot. Of, I done seen a lot of guys take a loss. I can't take no loss. I ain't taking no loss. So when I move, I move slower than most people, and they'll look at it like. Oh, you might miss out on opportunity. I'm not missing out on opportunity. You know what I'm saying? And so when I see somebody sit up there and try to play on me or sit up there and come with all those quick tactics, you know, those are red flags. And I think if you take 
any ball player, entertainer, anybody that comes into money, all you gotta do is pay attention to the red flags. And most guys disregard the red flags.